I believe I have the mind of God for this morning's service. I always love to bring the word of the Lord, to seek the Lord and hear what he has to say, and believe I bring it to hungry people yes. that want to hear truth. Yes. You know, if you come to this house, it's because you want to hear truth. Yes. Because um, I believe that's what God wants us to hear. I don't believe you come to church to hear lies and deception and, you know, he wants us to know the truth of the word, that we walk in truth. Therefore, if we walk in truth, we're going to walk in victory. Amen. Amen. So we're going to open our Bibles this morning to Isaiah. There's so much on my heart this morning, and I'm just believing the Holy Spirit is filling my mouth with the words that we need to hear and that we're going to be able to chew on it. Heaven said to me this morning, and she found out I was preaching, she said, oh, that's why you wore a dress. <laughs> so I said, you know, I've got a word from God, but I might step on a few feet this morning. Let me have a smile offering now <laughs> before we begin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I'm, I just want to have a serious talk. Because we are living in the end of, end of, end of the end of days. Amen. That's where we are. And too many people don't understand that or know it. Or they would not just be playing church. Right. We're in a very serious time. If you have any question on that, just look at the news. We're in big time, serious times. We got to know what God's saying and what God's doing. Amen. So in Isaiah 60, verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. That sounds great. But we have to receive it and walk in it. For behold, pay attention, take hold of, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. That should be the heart cry of every believer, is that the glory of God is seen upon you. Amen. But it says here in verse 2, it says, Behold, or pay attention, or fix your eyes on what is going on that you're not unaware of the hour that you're living in that we are so aware of what is going on that we believe that we want to see the glory of god manifested on us in us and through us and he said look around behold the darkness shall cover the earth that means distress and misery, wickedness, destruction. You can look around and you can see the insanity of what we're living in. Amen. That's darkness. Now it said, it shall cover the whole earth. Do you know what that means? It means it's going to cover people. And if we're unaware, it can even cover us. Amen. That we can walk in darkness even though we've been born again into the light. Even though Jesus said that we are the light of the world. But darkness can sneak in on us. And that's what Isaiah is prophesying about these days. He's declaring it. There's always been darkness on the earth. There's always been misery and distress, but not like in our hour. We're, we're living in a different time because we're in the end of days, and I'm going to take us to Matthew 24 in just a little bit and share where we are. And then he says, not only will darkness cover, cover the minds of people, it's what it means, it's covering the minds of people, and then it says, and gross darkness. Not only darkness, but gross darkness. Darkness that is concealing and hiding the truth. 
How many people has darkness covered their eyes and hiding the truth? Covering the minds of people to where they're not thinking rationally, where they can't even understand that they have been born a male and their entire life should be lived as a male. Whoever thought we would see those days. So darkness is covering the minds of people, causing deception to enter in. Now, when darkness starts coming, we don't always see it and we don't always realize it. But we should be in a place, a church that tells you the truth, so that your eyes stay opened up and you know what truth is. Because if you don't know what truth is, you can be deceived. Matthew 24 says that. So he says, here this darkness, this misery, thick darkness will cover the earth. Well, it's covering the earth. And even Christians are being deceived in it. Even Christians are in that place. One of the words for being gross darkness is it is an offensive to good morals. Vulgar. We are seeing that. We are living in that right now. And people, are, are, Christians, are falling into that trap, and they can't see it. Their eyes cannot see truth. When, bar, when darkness begins to set in, you begin to accept things that are unacceptable. Are we not seeing that? Christians, I'm, I'm talking to Christians that agree with the things that are going on right now. Now, Friday, Pastor and I spent Friday afternoon for quite a while visiting in a rehab center a man that wanted to talk to us, and we went, and uh, he wanted to talk to us about the end of days, and I thought, oh, praise God. (laughs) I've been studying on it. And he said to us, he said, you know, darkness, I'm trying to figure this out. And he said, you know, I have friends that are in the gay lifestyle. And he said, "I, I watch the news. And he said, I see the news that everybody is going woke. So I'm thinking that's okay because everybody's doing it. Now, he's being honest from his heart, and he's looking for truth. Thank God he was looking for truth. So we're listening to him, and he's telling us. He said, it seems like everybody is accepting all of this. So in my mindset, it's okay. And he said, what do you think? Well, don't ask me. As I'm, you know me, I'm just, huh, this is the way it is. This is what the Word of God says. That's the way it is. I did have a grace on me. I was, I was kind. I am kind. I'm just trying to tell truth. You know, and, and so we shared, and I shared some things about the end of days and what we're looking at, and I shared about the growth. Pastor shared some things, and, you know, when we got finished... When, and we sat there for quite a while just giving him the truth. And we prayed with him at the end. But at the end, right before we left, he said, I felt the darkness leave and the light come. Glory to God. You know, that's breakthrough. If he'd gone too much further, he may have been covered in gross darkness. And when you get it that thick, it's harder to win over. Because sometimes when you walk in deception and you accept the things of the world and you agree with the things of the world, you don't understand, but you're deceiving yourself and you're going the way of the world and you're drifting far from God. That's the hour that we're living in. But verse 5 says, Well, let me just read three. And the Gentiles 
shall come to the light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. So it says that basically nations, people, are going to come to the light. When this gross darkness is going on, those that are carrying the light, those that are carrying the truth, darkness, the people that are in darkness are going to be attracted to the light. That's why we must be in church, be in that place that we're not playing church, not finding excuses not to be in church. I'll read in, in a minute the scripture in Hebrews that says, as, as you see the day approaching, you know, you need to be in church. Because you've got to hear truth because there's so many lies that are out there. There's so much of the world talking. And as that man said, he said, everybody's saying it. Not saying it. I'm not in, I'm not in agreement with what the world is doing. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I am not going to keep my mouth quiet. Amen. Truth has to be told. Yes. Verse 4, lift up thy eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar. Thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see. When are they going to see? In the middle of darkness and gross darkness is spreading across the world. All of these things are going on. The prophet Isaiah says, Thou shall see and flow together and thy heart shall fear in awe of God and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. That's the abundance of the people. There's a great harvest that is coming. There is a great harvest that is about to take place on this earth. So it may look like gross darkness. It may be darkness all around, but don't you participate in it. Let the light of the glorious gospel shine in your hearts that people see light. They see hope. They see something on the inside. That's why Isaiah said, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. You've got to believe that. We have to stand in that place and that we arise and we shine and we let our, our light shine before people. Amen? Amen? It has to be in this hour. So we're going to turn over to Matthew 24 because I want to talk to you about the end of days. You have to be aware of the time that you are living in. You have to understand we are not living in normal days that we used to live in. We are living in the end of the days that Jesus could come. And you may say, well, I've heard that all my life. Well, you're closer than you were. And he is coming. And he is coming for a glorious church. And Isaiah prophesied it. He said, arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory, the presence of God has risen upon you. Well, that's what the church is about because he's coming back for a glorious church without spot and wrinkle. And if you're living in the world, I'm going to tell you right now, you've got spot and wrinkle. Isn't that fun? Don't you love when I preach? (laughs) Hallelujah. When God puts these things on me to share with the congregation, it's to reach the heart of each and every person. That if we need to adjust, we adjust. If we need to change, we change. That we do whatever it takes in this hour to walk upright with God. And God is not playing church. Church is not here for your convenience. Church is here to raise up a people that have the fire of God, carry the glory of God, and have a heart to change the darkness into light. That's what the church is about. And so in Matthew 24, I'm just going to share some verses with you. I'm not going to read all of it. We've read it before. 
But verse 3 says, And as he, Jesus, sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? I want to know that one. I want to know what is the sign of the coming of the Lord and of the end of the world. So I don't think they really knew what they were asking. But they asked it, and Jesus answered. And so as he answered, he said, Take heed that no man deceive you. What did I just tell you? Darkness is covering the earth, and it's trying to do what? It's trying to deceive us. It's trying to trick us. It's trying to get us in a place that we agree with the world, but yet we are the ones that carry the light and the truth. And we need to start doing that. We need to, you know, sometimes I'm not saying be ugly. I'm just saying be bold. We have to be truth tellers. Because you could save that person's soul from hell. You know, Friday night there was an earthquake in Monaco. I hope I say that right. Morocco, that was it. I knew it was Morocco. I don't know why I said the other one. Just see if y'all knew what you were talking about. That's all I was doing. I was checking on y'all. And a thousand, last I saw was a thousand. They were looking. They said there will be more than that. And a matter of seconds went into eternity. I have a feeling most of them at that point was not thinking about going into eternity. But in a matter of seconds, a thousand people like that passed into death or life. I don't know. I don't know where their souls went. That's the day we're living in. I think it was in February when Turkey had that earthquake and 50,000 people plop into eternity. I don't know how many made heaven. See, we don't have that in our mind. We're so busy. Then he goes on, he's going to go to verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, I just want you to know that's after the tribulation. That's during the tribulation. We will not be here during the tribulation. Thank God. This is talking to Israel. When you, therefore, shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. That is, you know, talking about in the tribulation. And so he's talking to Israel. He's talking to the Jewish nation. He's talking to the people about end times. And then he comes on down. So we're going to go on down to verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branches is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, we know that summer is nigh. In Luke, it talks about not only the fig tree, Israel, but it talks about the other tree, which is the nations of the world. And so he's telling us that we are to watch the signs. What did they ask? What was their question? What is the sign? What are the signs of the time that it's going to tell us when your coming is? That was their question. So Jesus and the end of the age. And so Jesus is answering those questions. And he's doing that not really for their benefit because they're in heaven. They've gone on. It's for our benefit. And God put it in their hearts to ask the question so that you and I could start understanding the signs of the times and look at them and become aware and do what the prophet Isaiah say, arise, shine. That's, our, that's what we're called to do is arise and shine. We are not to draw back and go hidden in caves and that somebody can't tell if you're a Christian or not. I told the staff, 
That's I'm going to step on some toes. <laughs> and I said for you all to do what? Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> to encourage everybody. Right. This is not a sad story. This is an exciting time that we're living in. Amen. This is the day that as, as Jesus is getting closer to coming, we're to be prepared. And he talks about that in Matthew 24 and 25, how to be prepared when he comes. Amen. So he says, look at the fig tree and look at the nations, the nations in the Middle East. What is going on in the Middle East? It's in headlines all the time. They're trying to figure out now, again, how to separate Jerusalem, how to separate it. God forbid that America agree with it. Amen. Even though our president, President Biden, stood in the United Nations and trying to figure out how to divide Jerusalem. Joel said, Joel prophesied, do not divide my land. And he said, it's my land. God called Israel his land. So what right as a nation, because nations will be judged, what right is it for our president? And I, he's not, President Biden isn't the only one. George W. Bush did it. So I'm not on a political spectrum right now. I'm just telling you facts. These are signs of the end of days. We're looking at the signs of the end of days so that we know how to walk in the end of the day so that we're ready when he comes. Anybody want to be ready? Amen. So these are signs that are going on. And he said in verse 34, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. So the time clock started in 1948 when Israel became a nation. Everything is centered in the timeline around Israel. We have to understand that. Israel is the key factor. The Old Testament is written about what? Israel. So it is the factor in where we are. It's the factor in what's going on. And he said, watch the nations. He said, watch. And in, in Ezekiel, it talks about the nations. It talks about the nations in the north. Who is a nation in the north? If you go straight up from Jerusalem, that's not America. You should go straight up from Jerusalem because that's your, that's your uh, pivotal point is Israel. And so you go straight up north of Jerusalem is what? I'll give you a history lesson. Russia. Right? So Russia is a player in the end of days. Russia. Iran. Look at the war in Ezekiel 38. I'm telling you signs of the times. And it's on the news. Russia is in agreement with Iran, Turkey, so, uh, Libya. Some of these Muslim nations are lining up with the word of the Lord prophesied thousands of years ago. You don't think God knows what he's talking about? Amen. God knows what he's talking about, and we have to be ready. As a body, we have to be ready for what's going on. So that we do not miss out. We can miss out on so many things. But he's given us a key here. Because what are we talking about? The signs of the time and the end of the world. And I will say again, the end of the world, you will already be raptured. You'll be taken up. Caught up. Then he says in verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage 
until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So eating and drinking and marrying and, and the way of the world are going to be out there, but there's coming a time the church will be caught out of here. I want to go on the first load. So I want to be ready. And he's going to talk about, and I'm going to talk about being ready. So he said, you know, when the flood, before the flood came and Noah built that ark, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. And there were, I don't know how many people on the earth at that time, but there were a lot of people. And no one was preaching righteousness. And nobody listened. That means the world didn't listen. I mean, God was giving them an opportunity to get right with God. God was speaking to them to get right. God was sending Noah in a, in a world that didn't care. I think we kind of live in that. Amen. A world that doesn't care about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That a world wants to do it their way. Amen. That a world wants to live however they want to live. And half the church is like that. Let's go to verse 42. I'm just kind of going through here. Now these words are in red, and Jesus is speaking. Do you think we should pay attention? Listen to what he's saying? Hear what he's saying? Watch... Or pay attention is what he's saying. <laughs> Therefore, for you know not what your hour your Lord doeth come. Now he's, he's referring to some, the Lord. Not the Lord of the world. The Lord, the body of Christ. So he's talking to the church. He said, but know this. So he's going to give us something that we can look at to know what he's talking about. And he says, now pay attention. In this hour, in in this time, when the signs are going on, we are to pay attention to what's going on so that we can know that the coming of the Lord draweth nigh and we're ready for it. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, Now, Jesus is not a thief, but he's giving a reference point for us to understand. And what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. So he's saying to us, here's your example. If the good man, if you had known, and I'm telling you, we're in the end of days. If you had known that it was in the end of days, you would have not slacked off. You would have not gone the way of the world. You would have been in that place, and you would have been the protector of your house. That's what he's saying. Because you don't know the hour that Jesus is coming. You just have signs to know it's getting close. Are you all with me? I may have to do a song and dance to get the intense. Not so intense, but then you might really run out. So, he says in verse 44, Therefore, be ye also ready. He's making a point here and telling you that if the good man of the house had been watching been ready, been prepared, his house wouldn't have been broken into. He wouldn't have missed. So he says, therefore, be ye also ready, prepared. Who is he talking to? 
Who is he talking to? He's talking to me, each and every one of us. Say, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. That means you need to perk up your ears and listen. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then? Now he's going to tell you. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Whom his Lord, so you know it's the church, has made ruler over his household. That's us, over his household. To give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant. Now look at this. I want everybody to look at it. Whom is Lord when he comes, sitting back and doing nothing. Is that what it says? No. Coming to church when they want to? No. Coming to church when they feel like it? No. Coming every once in a while? Staying home, watching it online? He says, when the, his Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing. Doing. What is he doing? What is his Lord going to find him doing? Well, if you're a faithful and a wise servant, if you're a faithful and a wise servant, then you're going to be doing the works of the Lord. Then he's going to give you, verse 47, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but I'm going to say, Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil, evil servant, shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. He's not coming. I've heard this before. The signs may be getting closer. The birth pains may be going on. But I'm not going to believe that. That's what they did in the days of Noah. They didn't think it could rain. He said, My Lord, he's just delaying his coming. And shall smite, begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkard. That basically, you know what that really means? It's going the way of the world. To put it down in English, he's doing what he wants to do. He's not considering the things of God important. He's dismissed them because he thinks Jesus really isn't watching. Jesus really isn't seeing that I stayed home from church. I sent my family, but I stayed home. Oh, I didn't feel like going to church today. So I'll just stay home. I've got all sorts of excuses why I don't come to church. This is what God says. This is what Jesus says. Verse 50, The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and an hour that he is not aware of. This church, I'm preaching to you so that you know that you can come aware of you're living in the end of days. Amen. Now you will have no excuse. I'm, I'm saying all of this for I love you. Amen. And I want to see God's best for you. But we cannot play Christian any longer. And this is what he says, and cut and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, that doesn't sound like fun. 
Then he goes in. Listen, he is talking to the church. And he talks about, in chapter 25, he talks about the kingdom of heaven is like. What is it like? And he says, ten virgins which took their lamp and went forth to meet the bridegroom. He said, five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. What did he call the servant before that? The faithful and wise. That was the one that was what? Doing the things of God. Going after God. Putting their own flesh and wants aside from them. He was doing, they were doing good works. They had oil because they were doing good works. They were working for the kingdom of God. They were doing things that God had called them to do. What are good works? I want to just give you a couple of things that are good works. So if we have time, we'll come back to Matthew 25. But I want us to look at a couple of things. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. It's not by works that we're saved, but we will do works. Do you know as believers, we will stand at the judgment seat of Christ? There will come a day when the rapture comes, we're going to get our rewards. And our rewards are going to be for good works. That's what the scripture says. You think, Pastor Vicki, you're serious. I want you all to have rewards. You may think, all your rewards, I mean, this is nothing compared to what the kingdom of God and heaven is going to be like. And so he says in verse 10, For we are, talking to the body, his workmanship created in Christ Jesus Under what? We're created for good works. To do good works. We're born again in the kingdom of God to do good works. That's what we're called to do. And he said, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. And you know, I noticed in this, when I was looking at this and I've studied the word, there's no retirement. People want to retire. I'm not against retiring. I'm just not retiring. If I was to retire, I'm going to retire into the gospel. Americans have been programmed that at 65, 70, retire. Go on vacation, see the world, play. And yet Jesus is telling us we're in the end of days. And I'm not saying you can't go on vacation. Please hear my heart. But it can't be your lifestyle. There's work to be done. And Jesus said, at the judgment seat of Christ, our good works are going to be judged. And what are your good works? They're either going to be Gold and silver and stone, good stone, or wood, stay, and hovel. Now, if all you've got on your good works are wood, stay, and hovel, they're going to burn up. But praise God, you made heaven. You got in. It's better than being judged at the judgment seat of the throne of God. There's a great white judgment. That's for unbelievers. But we as believers will be at the judgment seat. And it's what we did in this earth that brings the rewards in heaven. And I will tell you right now, heaven is not a socialistic heaven where everybody gets the same thing. I think I need a small offering. (laughs) Now from this side over here. Thank you very much. I'm telling you what the Bible says in the days that we're living in so that we're prepared for it. 
Amen? So let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 5. Now, this is Paul talking to Timothy about the church and about responsibilities in the church. And it talks about the elder woman as mothers and the youngers as sisters with purity and how to honor widows. And it goes right on down. But it does say something I want you to understand. It said, verse 10, talking about widows, but it's talking about people that serve God all their life. This is what they well reported of for what? Good works. And he said, what are good works? Here's some examples of good works. If she has brought up her children, you know there's a reward for that. If you bring your children up with the fear of God and you teach them what is right in the sight of the Lord, you know, if after they're adults, if they go their own way and choose that, it's not on you. It's on them for not choosing the right way. But if you bring your children and you teach them the fear of God, if you teach them the word of God, if you teach them to live right, and if you live right before them, there's a reward for that. Oh, glory to God. That's a good work. That's what Paul said a good work is. And you'll get judged on it. If you lodge strangers, if, basically if you're hospitable. If you wash the saints' feet, if you relieve the afflicted or help people, if your heart is to help people, you serve. He's talking about people that serve, people that have a heart for God, have a heart for the church, that want to work, you know, in the church and not retire out of, the, out of working. You know, pastor said, I don't know how many Sundays in a row, pleading, really, what he was doing. We need help in the nursery. Thank God Randy and Eric are in here together. I don't see that very often because Randy is doing children's church and nursery and uh, needs help, and you can help. I've heard, now I'm, uh, listen, you might as well get your feet under the seat because I might step on them good. <laughs> well, people retire from, from children's work. They decide they don't want to do it any longer. They've done it for a few years. So let's not do it any longer. I'll come and sit in church. Amen. I think I thought about this this morning. Now, Hezer, just come stand up here. Amen. Have him come stand up here. Yes, representing. So here they are, standing up here, representing the praise and worship team. So on a Sunday morning or a Thursday night, Hezer goes, well, I've done this for six months now. I think I'll just sit down. So just sit down, Hezer. heaven now she's worked in the church she's worked in children's ministry she's done praise and worship she works in the academy you know heaven is priceless but heaven comes in and she says ah i'm tired of singing i think i'll just not sing anymore i decided to retire i've done it long enough And all of a sudden, there's somebody to lead praise and worship that morning. And I'm just telling you right now, you do not want me leading praise and worship. (laughs) 
you'll never know what a key is. <laughs> but here we go. There's Greg over there. There's Don over there. I see. You over there? Oh. And they decide, we don't want to usher anymore. We're, we're retiring. We're tired of it. And nobody steps in. How about this one? We all prepare and we have no praise and worship now. And Pastor gets up that morning and says, Well, I'm done. Oh, okay. You want to preach? Nope, I think I'll be done with you. People may come to church. We'll just do like they do. Well, I wonder who's going to preach this morning. Hmm. Hmm. wonder who's going to sing. Hmm. Hmm. I don't get, we would, for God forgive this one. Eric and Randy didn't show up. Oh, you want to put your kids somewhere? Oh, nap. We're not doing it anymore. The Lord's coming for those that are working. Yeah. Yes, amen. He said that, those that are doing. Those that aren't staying home, I'm telling you, there are very few excuses for staying home. I will tell you, there's a lady in here, and she's here this morning, but she misses a lot of Sundays and Thursdays because she has to take care of her mother. That's not an excuse. That's something that has to be done that God honors. But her heart is to be in church. That's her heart. Because she wants to see the kingdom of God. I am telling you the truth that the Lord is coming. And he wants to find us to him. What I'm trying to say to you this morning, there are good works. And you don't realize what good works are. And God wants a church that is ready with workers. Yeah. Not ready that you don't know if you can count on them being there on a Sunday morning. That you don't know if you can count on them being. I can guarantee you can't count on being on Thursday night. It's awful quiet in this Pentecostal church. I am trying to prepare you for what you're living in. And when the church is called home, what will Jesus say? He added two. As you read on, you're going to find out the faithful and the foolish servant. I don't have time to read all that. You're also going to find out about the talents. He is talking to the body of Christ. Are you using your talents or are you using excuses? I'm praying and believing that it's going to penetrate into some hearts because I do not want you standing someday before the Lord and him look at you and want to know, uh, you don't have any gold or silver or precious stones to give to the Lord. But you made heaven. I know I'm serious, but there's a world that is woke. There is a world that is insane. Serious things are happening in this hour. Things that are beyond your control and my control. 
and it's going to take God touching the church and rising up. You know, that Ezekiel war could happen at any time. They're planning on it. They're not holding back. Putin is not holding back. You know where he stands. I'm not sure where America stands. Iran has made it clear that they want to nuke Israel and America. That should shake you up. That we pray. That we're living. That is a sign of what we're living in. This is not a political message. This is a sign. And I'm saying, wake up. Arise, shine, for the light has come. We need help. And I appreciate the people that stepped up and to do work in the children's ministry. I appreciate. What if the media team wasn't here? What if they sat down? And said, I, I've done this. Bill, how many years have you been back in that sound booth? 450 million? <laughs> Jaden's going, yes, yes. How many years? 15 years. I'm looking at him going, please don't sit down. Because you've done this for so many years. Bill comes up and says, I'm retiring. Not from his job, Jen. <laughs> but from the media. Do you understand my heart and what I'm saying? There is not retirement in the church. The church has to go on. It has to go on. Her souls to be one. We haven't got our job done. I'm not mad at anybody. I want to encourage you. When Jesus comes, will he find you working? Or will he find you on the beach? Where will he find you? At home? Where will he find you? The Lord is coming. And when he comes, he's coming to reckon. We don't like those things, but it's truth. And you've heard me say it. My heart has cried out. We prayed and we believed. It's time for us to take action. You can't just occupy a seat. I mean, you can. Do whatever you want. And you just come in and occupy a seat. A war was going on, and soldiers were fighting all around you, and you're just sitting there and just saying, I'm tired of this. I think I'll just sit here and hold my gun and do nothing. I'll occupy, I'll just sit. Jesus said, will I find you doing when I come? Will I find you doing? Or what will I find you doing? This is what the Lord put on my heart. Darkness is covering the earth. Gross darkness. And the church has to take her place. Amen. 
And I'm not going to apologize for the message. Right. I hear the heart of the Lord talking to his people. And what you do with it, because it's been given to you, what you do with it, it's up to you. I promise you, I'm not coming to your house with a gun to make you do something. I'm not going to come knock on your door. I just presented it. I fed you the word of the Lord, the heart of God. And how you respond is between you and him. There's no condemnation. But if I were you, I'd hearken. I'd look at the signs. I'd look at what's going on. And I'd ask the Lord. I'd say, Lord, what would you find me doing? Lord, is there something I need to be doing in the church? Could I do something? Besides occupy a seat? Besides show up when I feel like it? Lord, I've done what you told me to do. I believe I've given your heart to them, Lord. And these are your children. And I ask you, Father, to speak to your children. Father, I pray over every person in the hearing of my voice. No condemnation, no guilt. But I'm asking you to speak to your children. I'm asking you, Father, to shine the light of your precious Holy Spirit into our hearts. And Father, if we need to repent, we repent. If we've looked at things wrong, open our eyes to see truth. For you're telling your church to arise, get to work, move forward. Lord, if we're in denial and apathy, whatever it may be, open our eyes up to the truth. Yet we may see and, and work. There's work to be done. There's work to be done. So I ask all the, Father, you bless all the ones that are working so diligently. And then the others that are just coming to church, I'm asking you to minister to them, pour your love out on them, and help them to go the extra mile. Help them, Lord, to answer your call. Help them, Lord, to move forward. Speak to their hearts, God. With your will, O oh God. Your will, O oh God. We're going after the kingdom of God. For darkness is hovering, and we want to be the light. We want to be the light, O oh God. We want to shine as bright as the stars. We want to be the example that when people see us, they see truth. They see righteousness. They see the love of God. And they see the ministry of Jesus. Help us, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to be a light in this dark, 
world. And Father, we'll give you all glory and all honor and all praise. Thank you, Lord, for your truth. Help us not to play church. Help us, God. You pray right, right now. Just ask the Lord. You and Him, you speak to each other. That grace, oh God grace upon your people. Grace. That grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray you take this message home with you. You pray about it. You think about it. Please don't just dismiss it. I plead with you as your pastor. Please don't dismiss it. It's too important. It's too important to the end, end of days. 